G'day mates, in today's video, I'll be covering a strategy that I've picked up from doing a lot of solo VOD reviews of the first week of solo cash cups in Fortnite Chapter 2. It is a completely new strategy that I don't think enough people are using and it is absolutely insane. It is leading to some of the most consistent placements and stack loot I have ever seen. In today's video, I'm going to not only go into detail on why this strategy is so insane, but even break down two drop spots in detail that, I, that abuse this strategy depending on your current skill level. Now, without further ado, the strategy of course is... This strategy is of course fishing. Now yes, a lot of you will obviously already know about fishing, but don't close this video, please hear me out. Most professional players are building their entire drop spots and strategies around fishing and gaining insane amounts of points in arena or tournaments. It is the number one way to not only gain god tier loadouts, but also stay safe and consistent through early and mid game and gain those crucial placement points every single game. It's because of how easy the strategy is that it isn't only for the top tier pros, it can easily be implemented by you no matter what your skill level is. It'll allow you to easily climb the arena leaderboard or perform far better in weekly solos tournaments. You have a higher chance of fishing up an epic or legendary shotgun and AR from fishing pools than any other form of loot in the game. It isn't even this that makes it so powerful, it's the ability to stack so many of these fish and tank entire storm rotations. It is why I always see these pros going to endgame with 6 floppers and all legendary or epic loot, and they manage to do it while staying safer than anyone in the lobby, fishing through sometimes the entire first storm. I will now cover 2 drop spots in depth that utilize this late storm rotation fishing strategy depending on your current skill level. The 2 drop spots I recommend are the far north island to the west of Craggy or Slurpy Swamps. These two drop spots to suit different playstyles and skill levels. North Island is going to be less contested and lend itself to a less confident or more careful player, possibly someone new to competitive or just trying to gain safer points. Slurpee will be more contested being a bigger POI, however if you follow the loot path I suggest, I guarantee you will leave far safer and make endgame with much better loot than the other players that drop there. Don't worry, I'll go into both these loot paths I've just shown in much more detail and explain them properly. The best part of this island strategy is that it will very rarely be contested. If it is and you don't have the best loot from your house and aren't comfortable engaging the enemy, you can easily rotate across the water back to the main island without being seen or shot at and still gain plenty of loot. If uncontested though, you want to make sure you prioritize getting max wood and brick which you can easily do on this island and then start fishing all the pools on the north side of the island, working your way around to the east and then the south. This is because if you have a fast storm and need to tank some damage, having extra floppers and slurp fish on the south side of the island near your boat is much better. This particular drop is amazing because it has an extremely close and uncontested store of max metal. Now remember, if you have a far zone and you will take some storm damage to gather this metal, don't worry. The strategy is so insane, you will still get in on 100 shield, 100 health with floppers and slurp fish to spare after you go back to your boat and eat some of those spare floppers that you fished up earlier. Here is an example of the loadout I walk away with after doing this exact rotation. I actually had pretty bad RNG on fishing this game and took me far longer to get a few extra slurp fish than usual and I got contested. Even with this, my loadout is still incredible and I am rotating through storm like I said and I get in safely with only using one flopper and very close to gaining placement points. This drop is a safe drop that almost guarantees placement points every single game and has god tier loadout going into endgame to make sure you have the best chances possible to win. This second drop spot is actually the one that made me realize how strong this strategy is. I was VOD reviewing Volks' endgames after he won the first Solos Cash Cup and noticed he always had 3-6 to six slurp fish in his inventory. I went back and watched his early game footage and was blown away by how often he would stay in Storm fishing before rotating in. Due to how close slurp he usually is in the middle of the map, you never have too far to rotate and easy access to a ridiculous amount of fishing pools that are rarely contested by people rotating. The south side of Slurpee especially has almost no one going through it. If you take the already insane amounts of shield and loot you get from Slurpee and can avoid the spawn fight or play it safe and then incorporate my fishing strategy rotation, you will be an absolute monster heading into late game with this drop. You always want to start at the factories on the west side of Slurpee. These are the least contested buildings to drop on and allow you an easy and safe rotation down towards the river and under the bridge if Slurpee is heavily contested. There are enough shield kegs here to break to get a maximum shield from these three buildings which you'll want to do every single game. If you are uncontested or feel like pushing the spawn fight, you can take the purple rotation route through Slurpee, but honestly, the risk it takes compared to the reward in my opinion is rarely worth it. You need to make sure you are the first one at the boat and fishing rods spawn on both rotation paths though. Whether you've taken the red or purple path, you want to use the boat to rotate south into the safe fishing holes around Slurpee. You'll almost never run into anyone here, and I haven't been able to confirm it yet, but I believe you have a higher chance of catching Slurpfish from the pools within Slurpee. 
Once you've fished all these pools safely, you now have your boat to rotate straight north through the Slurpy Swamps River up through Weeping Woods, and you should have 100 health, 100 shield, and at least one to two stacks of Slurpfish, ready to absolutely rail anyone endgame. I hope you guys enjoyed my guide. I really believe that focusing on drops that enable safe and consistent rotations through fishing is the current meta to placing well in solos. This season more than any other has seen a lot of people struggle to reach champions division for a number of reasons, and this strategy can be implemented to not only do well in tournaments, but gain a lot of arena points very easily. This is the first in-depth guide like this I've done, and if you enjoyed it or learned something, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so I know as I'll be doing way more instructional content in the future. Thanks for watching.